Rick here with Game Trade Media, coming to you live for another episode of Painting Happy Little Minis. And we've got... Dave! Dave's hey. here. Dave, <laughs> our resident instructor, the teacher of all things paint and pigment. <laughs> how, was cool. your, how was your holiday? It was great, yeah. Thanksgiving yeah. was awesome. Um, I'm always a big fan of Thanksgiving. Yeah? Yeah. Um, it's... Uh, well, particularly the way we celebrate with my wife's family, it's, it's very much about just getting together and relaxing and talking and eating cool food and All right. um, that sort of thing. There's no sort of additional pressure to do anything or get anything done or that sort of thing. So they're all fairly close, so there's not a lot of travel involved as well, which is nice. Yeah, so super that is perfect. Yeah. What is your favorite uh, dish during the, that holiday? Uh, my sister-in-law makes a corn pudding. Okay. Which is really cool. Uh, like nice. a sweet corn? Yeah, oh, yeah, like sounds... a sweet corn pudding. It's, um, <laughs> it's really good. nice. And it's one of those things where I could actually just sit there and eat the whole bowl yes. of it, but there's nine other people and I kinda feel they the all want way. some. So, but uh, yeah, that uh, and turkey, of course. Yeah. And what? Turkey. turkey. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of turkey. So. That's kind of cool. This year, uh, my brother-in-law deep fried it. Oh. He deep fried two turkeys oh my for us. So, so that was cool. Uh, it was the first time I've had deep fried turkey. So much but, juicier, uh, isn't it? Uh, it was good. I, well, I think usually the way I cook my turkey, mm. um, I make sure that it's, it doesn't dry out. So, um, yeah. <laughs> she knows where it's at. Right. Um, definitely. Uh, so, yeah, I think uh, I didn't think it was that much juicier. Okay. But it was uh, definitely good. Yeah. See, I, I like, it. We, we also had a deep fried turkey. Oh, cool. Um, but my favorite dish is sweet potato. Oh, I am a sweet potato fan. <laughs> uh, I could literally eat chicken and sweet potatoes for every meal. Right. Yeah. Nice. So, uh, chicken breast, skinless with sweet potatoes. Uh, yeah. So good. Nice. Yeah. That's cool. How about you guys out there? What did you guys get into for the holiday? Did you guys play any games this weekend? Did you play any games this weekend? I did. I played three games this Ooh. weekend. Three games of Dark Age on Sunday. What? Yeah. Where'd you play at? Uh, at uh, Games and Stuff. Very cool. The local, my local gaming store. So. I like it. Uh, I'm going to yeah, be going good. there tomorrow. Oh, cool. After work. you be chatting with uh, Paul? Uh, yeah, for a hot minute if he's there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if he's not, uh, I'm going there to pick up a table. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. The, the um, geek chic table they have there. Nice. Yeah. So that'll be kind of fun. Okay. So... Uh, we are painting, for those of you that are interested in knowing, we are continuing to paint the Nolzor's Marvelous Miniatures and the Pathfinder Battles um, Terrain Miniatures that yep. came out That's by WizKids. So we've got the Adventurer's Campsite here, which uh, Dave is doing the wagon, and I'm doing the weapon rack and some other small pieces, the, back, the bed rolls and backpacks. Yep. Um, but we're also uh, doing a little bit of the Rusty Dragon Bar, um, which is in front of Dave as well. Got those here. So you, you yeah. dry brushed these up last time. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to hit them with one last sort of dry brush highlight and then nice. uh, slide all these really cool little... Uh, the bottles? The bottles, little uh, racks of bottles. They're tough to see at the moment, but um, once we're done, we'll stick them under the yeah, rotator. Cool. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, so we're going to work on these. Uh, we'll probably do these today, and if we need to do uh, spend another day on it, we'll do that on Thursday as well so we're going to try to finish this whole this whole set up which is something we have never done before <laughs> <laughs> well i take that back we did actually finish um one other thing that was the uh, walking dead all-out war okay we did finish those miniatures and uh, then played with them oh cool so that was kind of cool excellent and uh that's that's a fun game too yeah it looks really cool looks really good so a lot of the, uh, well, at the, the Mantic booth at PAX mm -hmm. Unplugged, yeah. they had uh, a lot of All Out War there. And uh, watched a couple of demo games and checked out the, all the cool different packs they've got. Nice. I know one of the guys that works for Mantic yeah. is here in Baltimore. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, Joe Neat. Yeah, that's his name. Yep. Yeah, yeah Joe's the uh, U.S. sales guy, sales sort of manager. Yeah, so he's, he's a local guy. Um, one of these days, I hope to get him up here. <laughs> yep. I've tried. 
He's a busy <laughs> dude. But we'll figure it out one day. Yeah. Yep, no doubt. But if you guys are not familiar with that game, you should check it out. All Out War. A lot of fun. And what was that game that you had mentioned before? The, um, the one where it's kind of like uh, the bomb, you know, sirens have gone off. and Oh, um, that, uh, that my buddy wrote? Yeah. Uh, that Joey McGuire wrote? Uh, this is not a test. This is not a test. Yeah. Yeah. There's some similarities. Yeah, yeah. Joe's is uh, very sort of... Um, Joe's is post-apocalyptic. Correct. Um, the setting he's written for it is is definitely sort of after the fall, after mm-hmm. the bomb. Yes. Bombs have fallen. and uh, But the system itself can be sort of reskinned for, for anything Correct. you yeah. want to try. It does have zombies, but you don't have to have zombies. So... Yeah. I've actually Great. seen it played oh, cool. at games and stuff. Yep. You might have actually been there playing it. Possibly. And we hadn't met yet. On a, like on a Wednesday night? Mm, I, I want to say it was during one of the events that Paul had at his oh, store. Oh, right, okay. They had a big table set up, uh, it, and it looked so good. It had like little mat, metal cars and yep. all sorts of stuff, like these uh, metal metallic, uh, I want to say like 124th scale cars were set up. And uh, it was like probably... Six by maybe six, maybe even okay. bigger. It was a well, big. Six by eight, sort of it was thing. big, a big play space. Yeah, uh, Joey's got um, Joey's local as well, uh, so he would have been running that, and he yeah. he does a great job with terrain. It, it uh, just looked phenomenal. Spe- fantastic looking tables. So I was like, man, I want to play that. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And is that one? Does that one uh, come with its own miniatures, or is it? You pretty much bring whatever miniatures you want to use to the table. Yeah, it's uh, it does fall into that sort of um, miniatures agnostic okay. kind of uh, area. But uh, Joey does have miniatures for a couple of the war bands. Oh, okay. Uh, but he's a big fan of lots of different miniature lines uh, and uh, towels, please. Um, so he's uh, yeah, he's a big fan of lots of different miniature lines. Okay. So he's done. Um, well, basically, he uses a lot of different different things well that's one of the thank you that's one of the things i like about like um like frost grave right because yep. you can use the miniatures that WizKids makes though they are branded dungeons dragons or pathfinder uh you can absolutely use those miniatures in frost brand because or frost grave because they don't have uh a miniature line i mean they do yep. there's a company that does make some miniatures for it but you can bring any miniature to that table yeah uh, yeah definitely. which is so cool yep there's a friend of mine uh mark Rayleigh, when he was doing, uh, decided to do a Frostgrave uh, warband, wanted to do dwarves. Okay. And there weren't dwarves in there, so he just put together a, a dwarf um, dwarf warband and used all the same stats as sort of the human stats. Right. But, uh, yeah, and they were from a bunch of different companies, I think. Well, because I, I, I have a Knoll warband. Oh, okay. That yeah. I've put together, and I've used They're a bunch of them from Knoll Wars. For, oh, okay. So I used some of the Frostgrave ones because I used the Knoll Apothecary from Frostgrave right. Miniatures as my leader, my wizard. Right. And then I have uh, Knolls from uh, the Knolls uh Marvelous Miniature set from WizKids and some of my warrior oh, cool. types. That's neat. So, it's one of the good things about miniatures in general. Um, a lot of times they can just they can be crossbred into other game systems. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Except for that one company. <laughs> <laughs> Which one company? GW. <laughs> Those are GW miniatures. Yeah. There's a very, very strong aesthetic in everything yes. they do. Which is fine. Uh, yep. But I, like, the heresy, st- or not the heresy stuff, the um, the Dark Age minis. Right. Yep. The, um... What are the big guys with the spears, uh, ice? Oh, the ice cast Dragiri? Yeah, Dragiri. Yep. I'm going to use those in other games. Oh, yeah. Because they are just beautiful and are good for, like, monsters. They'd be uh, great monsters in something like um, some sort of John Carter kind yes. of setup. Yeah, I bet you were thinking that. Yeah. I was, because yeah. that's exactly... Um, <laughs> there's a game out that a buddy of mine's putting together called Hollow... It's a Hollow Earth game. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. It uses a... No. It's um, under the hex 
game system. Okay. And uh, it has a very John Carter esque uh, uh, type of feel to it. Right. So yeah, that I was actually going to use them <laughs> in this game. Great. Yep. Yeah, that'd be perfect for that. Yeah, Ho Hollow Earth is what it's called. It's okay. like Journey to the Center of the Earth meets John Carter meets Tarzan. Right. Um, so it's got a lot of uh, like pulp yeah. sort of feel. Absolutely. Excellent. That's good. But uh, so what else did you get into this weekend? Uh, I do. I did as little as possible, really. <laughs> um, no, that's a lie. Actually, uh, I painted a lot of uh, miniatures for 30K. For 30K? Yep, or seriously, I'm working on a uh, commission for uh, Dave Kaufman, who's the owner of uh, Titan, Titan mm -hmm. just around the corner. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, I got a lot of, put a little painting done on that uh, commission this weekend, which is nice. Okay. As so, well as playing three games on yeah. Sunday. Yeah, which never <laughs> hurts. <laughs> so what is it about the commission? Like, what if someone wants to get into doing commissions? How would they go about doing that? Right. Um, they have to really love painting. First off, yeah. First off, <laughs> yeah. Uh, if, you, if you just kind of like painting, commission painting isn't for you. You've got to really love painting and want to paint a lot. Okay. Because you will be. <laughs> I mean, that seems to make sense. Yeah. Um, the so as long as you you love it uh, and you're able to sit down and sort of work for eight hours straight at a painting table. Oh my god! Uh, I not necessarily people can set their own schedules, of course. Right. But uh, yeah, I think from there it's just a matter of it's doing a lot of painting, getting your name out there, right. uh, talking to a lot of people. Um, getting involved in a lot of different painting groups online um, and then start sort of, sort of hang out the shingle and say here's what I'm doing I'm painting I'm painting yep so we've got some people in the chat saying hello cool hello uh, hello hi Steven and uh, Hangar and then Carrie's like Rick did you see the face hugger we cooked I did see it it looked amazing Though I feel like the legs were what crab legs, so that would be death. <laughs> uh, Emily said I played Oz Flux, Cartoon Network Flux, Suro, and Dominoes during Thanksgiving weekend. Those are all great games. Cool. Especially uh, Suro is the stone one. Okay. Which is kind of cool. Hey Keith and Kanan and uh, Kanan says we played Company of Iron and some Shadows of Brimstone. Nice. Cool. Give love to all of those. Yep. Uh, so, so for all of y'all that are watching, if you'd be so kind, if you haven't already, please give us a, a, a share and a shout out on your Facebook page, letting your friends and everybody know that we're here doing our thing as we do. Yep. And uh, yeah, we're trying to get all the paints done today. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we got to work hard. But uh, yeah, speaking of um, commission painters and shadows of um, brimstone. A uh, friend of mine, Aaron Lovejoy, mm -hmm. is a uh, commission painter out in uh, out on the West Coast in San Diego, I think. Okay. Uh, he set up. Um, well, he's been painting for a long time. He's a great painter. He's won a lot of uh, competitions and and so on. He just does beautiful stuff. Okay. And he has been doing a lot of uh, the studio paint work for uh, Foreshadows of Brimstone. Oh wow! Yeah. So a lot of the, the stuff, any of the painted stuff you see from them is typically his work. But that, That's always cool to, to hear about and see. Yeah. Yep. When you know some, a friend of yours has made it, you know, is that, is that like the, if, once you've gotten a miniature you've painted as part of the box art, is that like when you've arrived? <laughs> um, I guess possibly, okay. yeah. Um, different people have different sort of goals. Um, I think a lot of people would be pretty excited to to be on the box art uh, or something. Um, I don't think I've made it to the box art yet. Have you not? I thought you were on but, some um, of the uh, Dark Age box art. No, oh. no. No, I just paint my stuff. I just copy 
Ah. <laughs> the Dark Age box art. Okay. Uh, no, my stuff's not good enough uh, for what? that. What? I'm telling you. <laughs> you go and look at that stuff. Beautiful. Um, absolutely awesome. Okay. But uh, yeah, no, I, I think there are a lot of people who uh, who are commission painters who that that is their goal. Okay. Uh, would be to become a studio painter and paint for the box art, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, for other people, not so much. Okay. Um, there are a lot of painters who uh, who are great, um, could be doing box art, but they'd rather sort of have a little bit more freedom and they work with uh, with different clients and so okay. on. So on the average, for, yep. for like, like you, how many commissions do you do a year, you think? Ooh, uh, um, it kind of varies uh, because commission painting isn't my only sort of business. Right. Only thing I do for, uh, for funds. But uh, probably, I probably do two or three a month. Okay. Of varying sizes. That's not bad. So sometimes it might be uh, just a couple of minis. Uh, I'm actually painting some, some um, vending machine robots for uh, Joey's game. For this is not a test. Oh, that's kind of cool. So that's just two of those, and then this uh, big Legio Custodes commission I'm working on is uh, 110 models. Oh my God, that's the one so from uh, from Dave. Dave. Yep. All right. So that's a lot of minis. It is. It is. Uh, a whole bunch of those are vehicles okay. as well. So, yeah, and it's lots of gold, gold and red. So, is that what he wanted, or is that the? That's kind of it's what he wanted, but it's also kind of the the canon oh, okay. um, color scheme. Okay. It's my lunchtime. Hey, what's up, James? Welcome. Hey, James. He has arrived. Yeah. Very cool. Now, what uh, you said that's not your your primary source of uh, funds, obviously. What yep. what other, what's your muggle stuff that you're doing then? Well, the other, the other stuff, uh, well, I, I, um, it's all still uh, toy soldier, toy soldier related, yeah. So I do uh, layout, I do photography, I do uh, writing, editing, okay. um, marketing, okay. planning, promotions, that sort of thing. Nice. Uh, community uh, development. All that sort of stuff. Perfect. For a variety of different, different companies. Yep. All right. So it's a... A constant flow. Constant flow, yeah. Toy soldier stuff. So I, I don't really get the, the opportunity to focus or to, to concentrate just on painting. Right. Um, and to be honest, that's okay with me. Sure. The, uh, but yeah, there are a lot of... Uh, also, a lot of very talented people out there doing some great stuff. Right. Anyway. What are some, uh, like, historically, what are some uh, references that you used to, like, read or whatever on miniature painting, let's say, like, back in the 90s? <laughs> back in the 90s? Yeah, let's go historically. Right. Oh, back in the day. Um, basically, I'll admit, I, I didn't actually... I've never learnt well from... Uh, Reading, okay. I guess uh, you're a doer. A doer, yeah. Okay. So uh, I love to listen to people uh, talk about ways to do things, uh, and then practice things okay. myself. Uh, when I started painting, uh, sort of fairly quickly, I became the the best painter in the the group that I played with. Right. Um, and so I didn't really learn much. So it's probably two or three years of a fairly stagnant painting. I painted a lot, but I didn't, just didn't learn any new techniques. Okay. Uh, but when a games workshop store opened up in my hometown, the, uh, I started putting miniatures in the, the front, uh, front window. Right. All sorts of beautifully painted miniatures. And uh, there were some models in there that, uh, that I really liked. And I was like, oh, who painted those? And the manager was like, I painted them. And I said, really? That's fantastic. Could you teach me how to paint them? And I think, right. oh, how long did it take you? And he goes, oh, I painted them last night. Oh, he what? said, oh, you, you painted one of them last night? No, no, I painted all five of them last night. Jesus. And I'm like, oh, sit down and teach me, please. That's right, yeah. Um, 
So yeah, I used to spend a lot of time in that store. Uh, That's awesome. Getting painting painting tips and uh, and hints from him, uh, and some of the other other staff members there. And nice. Do you ever did you ever read Dragon Magazine back in the nineties? Oh yeah. yeah. Do you definitely. remember the article that was in there regularly called Through the Looking Glass? Uh, ooh. And it was about miniatures. Okay, I do painting. not actually. Uh, one of the individuals that contributed to that used to have a store in in um, Illinois, in Waukegan, Illinois. Okay. And uh, he was one of the contributors to that article, and uh, so I used to go there and I, I did some painting back then. Yep. But um, you know, so that was like one of my basics. Right. My basic training, I guess, in painting. Yep. But uh, again, back then, the techniques weren't, I think, kind of where they're at now. Yeah, there's a lot of, um, there's an incredible amount of refinement that's happened. Yeah. Uh, and then a Games Workshop store opened up in Gurney Mills. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and then I ended up transferring because I was stationed there. Right. But uh, I went to the, and that's where I was like, again, it, it seems like, when you come, when you think about like where a lot of epic painters come from, it, yep. they definitely come from that that arena of the Games Workshop, um, Warhammer right. painting. Yeah, well, I think uh, a lot of the the miniature painting, as we sort of as we know it, sort of before Games Workshop spread there, sort of their stores around the world. Um, it was really just a, it wasn't really being done as an art. It was being done as a, let's get them, get them painted, get them put painted and put on the table. Yeah. yeah. So we're not just playing with sort of bare pewter or Right, and whatever. it was usually testers. Yeah. Yep. Testers paint. That's, I mean, that's, I think, what I started off using was testers model paint. Yep. yep. Which was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think Games Workshop spread. There was a lot of, the, the idea of painting miniatures Became very um, well. Became reasonably well regarded. Yeah. And uh, there are a lot of, particularly in Europe, there are a lot of fantastic painters who uh, started bringing two-dimensional painting concepts to uh, to painting miniatures, to painting three-dimensional miniatures. So okay. things like uh, non-metallic metals, right? That sort of thing. So two D artists don't use metallic paint. They right. Silvers are all shades of gray, and uh, golds are yellows and browns. Hmm. So uh, they started applying those sort of ideas to, to miniatures. It's probably like late 90s, early 2000s. Okay. And uh, changed the whole face. <laughs> changed the face of it, yeah. yeah. Um, my, some things I haven't really talked about on any of the programming here is my grandmother on my dad's side, used to own a ceramic shop. Okay. Uh, so, you know, the whole kiln and slip and everything, you, you pour you pour the, the uh, clay, yep. the ceramic clay into the uh, the molds and then let them dry, then, you know, all that stuff. But okay. she used to have me paint for her. Right. For her craft shows. I was probably between 11 and 14 at this time. Okay. So that's where I got my first taste of painting, not miniatures, obviously, because they're not this small, but, yep. you know, ceramics and learning oh, sure, techniques yeah. there. And it did help a little bit in my first, like, foray into painting miniatures for gaming. Yep. But, yeah, the stuff that you and Kurt and others have been, sh and everybody in the chat and in, that have that follows us on the, in the group have, like, shown me things that I was just like, what? <laughs> what is this nonsense and magic and sorcery? <laughs> magic and sorcery. It's all magic and sorcery. Um, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's all pretty crazy. The sort of the things that you can, or the way you can go about painting and then the way you continue to refine the way you do those things. Right. So um, all of the different approaches that can be taken. It's ridiculous. I've actually uh, I've been talking to a couple of folks um, over, just over the last couple of weeks, and starting to, I'm starting to try and try and work out why uh, a lot of people who have been around miniatures for a while mm -hmm. but haven't done any painting because they feel very sort of daunted by the whole thing. Right. And I'm trying to work out exactly 
well, maybe not exactly. See if there's a commonality, mm -hmm. um, a, sort of across it all. Is it is it that people are concerned about techniques or uh, that they're spending? They feel they're spending too much time sort of deciding on how they're going to paint something. Right. Um, so if they're looking at their collection of paints and go, oh, I've got 15 different blues. Right. How am I going to paint this blue? Uh, that's. I, I'm trying to trying to work out what the the main stumbling blocks are, so that I can I don't know, write some articles or do some tutorials, do some tutorials, okay. or do some videos, just to to sort of help people around those those blocks, um, the things that are preventing them from from sitting down and painting. And what is the one of the more common common things that you're finding? Um, well, I, I, I'm just sort of I've just started asking those questions now. I've been talking to a few different people okay. and uh, haven't. I really got it, but I, I think that well, when I think about my painting, mm -hmm. then I say, okay, well, I'm gonna we're gonna paint this. I'm gonna paint right. it green. I didn't really, I didn't have to stop and think. Okay, here's here's 15 different ways I can paint it green. Right. It was like I have a standard way that I'd start to paint something green. Right. So I went straight to that. I picked up those paints and started painting. Right. But as a beginner. But as a beginner, you don't have that sort of knowledge. So sure. So is it a matter of saying here is a, here are some basic recipes, or the concept is find what your recipes are, your okay. paint recipes are, so that you have those and you can jump in and, and start using them. And then rather than if you have a paint recipe for um, for red, for blue, for green, for brown, for gray, uh, for gold, for silver, that right. sort of thing. When you come to painting, you can just use those, and if you're happy with that, you can just keep using those recipes. Okay. You want to try something new? Use four out of five of your recipes, and then change your fifth one up. Okay. So you don't have to... Be stuck in a rut? Well, you don't, you don't have to be stuck in a rut, but also you don't have to create something... You don't have to think of five new recipes every single time you go to sit down to paint. Right. I'm sure that's that's something that's that's hanging up a lot of people. So, I mean, if anybody's out there and, and they're in that sort of situation, just let us know if yeah. if it's if that's the thing that's sort of Keeping holding you, you up, give, yeah, sort of giving you a little bit of grief, or if it's something different. Um, obviously, there's there's the idea of techniques and like, right. Um, Jared is like has, has said that you know his painting has been more. The mainstay of his hobby, yep. than th even the gaming, because systems. He said systems sometimes come and go, you know. Yep. And uh, that he's more daunted by the gaming than the than the painting. Okay. So. Right. That's kind of a that's kind of a neat thought, that you know I, I get <laughs> that way too because, you know, when we do the building character thing, I'll be like, Psh, I can build a character for D and D, Pathfinder, yep. whatever. But some of these other role playing games that uh, that I've come across the table have been like, what? What? How, how does this work? And uh, you know, it can be a little daunting. But once I'm one of those individuals where I have to, I also have to, to like see it first. Right. Um, yeah, see it in action. Yeah. See it being done. So I, you know, because there's so many people out there making content, I'll go and I'll look it up. Right. Like, yep. who, who else has already done this type of thing using this system? Okay, cool. All right, now I get it. Easy enough. Yeah. Then we bring it to the table here. One of the things that I'm, I guess, I'm worried about is that, that with painting, is that there, are a lot of people are creating content for that middle of the, um, of the paint sort of spectrum. Right. It's like for, for people who already know or are already comfortable what their reds and greens and blues right. are going to look like, and just sort of helping them to the next step. So, just not sure how much there is out there that's, that's great for that first step. If you know what I mean? Right. Well, I, I, one of the things I thought was kind of interesting was the whole, um, what was it, the uh, the beginner paint set by Vallejo. Yep. Is a great starter for anybody. And yep. most of the paint companies, be it Vallejo, be it Army Paint or War Paints, um, even uh, Warhammer's uh, or Citadel Paints, they yep. have their starter blocks yep. that you can, you know, this is going to start you off, give you your primaries and a couple secondaries, yep. and any other secondaries you might need or tri uh, tertiary ones. You can mix them. Yep. 
Uh, so you can start there, and but then, like you said, as you get more comfortable with your recipes, yep, you can start like, like any good cook, experiment, yep. and and go go beyond. How do I switch it up this time? Yeah. So if you guys are new, or if you have friends of yours that are wanting to paint and they just haven't, you know, because of any fear, I would say, you know, as a holiday gift. That somebody's like, oh, I've always wanted to paint miniatures. If you hear, as soon as I hear that, I'm I'm now thinking, holiday gift starter right. paint set, starter paint set, and a starter miniature set. Be like, here you go. Yep. There's nothing daunting about twelve different colors. <laughs> yeah. Yep. The uh, yeah, it's definitely something that, that helps a lot, without a doubt. Um, picking up a whole bunch of uh, either some of the Whiz Kids minis or mm -hmm. uh, stuff from. Uh, Reaper, the Reaper Bones. The Reaper Bones, yeah. Models, uh, where you've got models that have got a lot of detail on them, uh, but they're inexpensive. Right. Yeah. You can, it doesn't, it's, it's not going to break your heart if you make a mistake. Right. Or and that's one thing about painting, too, something up. Yeah. is if you make a mistake, you can paint over it. <laughs> paint over it, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the glories of painting. <laughs> Jared says he likes the four old and one new recipe idea. Here you go, guys. The glass of lemonade is actually a best of Baltimore glass. Yep. It's kind of funny. I'm going to be washing out some brown in there, so it's going to go terrible. <laughs> Just murky. There we go. No, look like the harbor. Ugh. Best of Baltimore harbor water. Check that out. Yeah, it's disgusting. But <laughs> pretty accurate. Yeah, sadly. <laughs> But uh, I mean, yeah, I so like that. It's it, it's it's just it's something I'm thinking about. Yeah. Um, trying to work on. I'm doing a um, I'm writing a an article series at the moment for um, Beasts of War. Okay. Uh, so some friends of mine in the UK who have a pretty popular content site, uh, and it's about tackling big projects, uh, big painting projects. What, what what constitutes a big painting, like a, a huge army or a large model? Uh, it could be either. either, or. either. Something that's going to take you a couple of months. Oh, wow. At okay. Least, to, to sort of work through. Um, so, yeah, it could be like all of the terrain that um, mm -hmm. whiz kids do, for example. If you were right. painting that all up, how would you sit down and tackle that? Okay. What's your approach to that going to be? So there are a lot of things that are similar. So I, I talk about sort of inspiration and sort of expectations okay. and, and that sort of stuff. But it's prompted a lot of good conversations about um, uh, sort of with people who, who find pa uh, painting daunting. It's that, that sort of initial step. How do, you, uh, how do you get started? How do you get past that fear? So what See, is, that's uh, one of the things I want to do, and I actually have a couple of large models. All right, yep. That I want to do, and I think that might be something we can tackle next. Right. Um, yep. I have some of the Firelock ships. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, and I like ships. Right. I like naval battles and <laughs> stuff. So, uh, I have. I want to say two gal not galleons. Um, two of the medium-sized ships. Okay. They're like I want to say they're like this big. Yep. But you know, that's a pretty decent-sized model. Yeah, for sure. Um, not a lot of range in what possible colors you can do, but when you come when you come down to it though, the detailing of it is what's gonna I think gonna be the would be a daunting task. Sure. You know, it's gonna be brown. Yeah. You know, it's gonna be brown and then you're gonna have your highlights of the banding and whatever um, lighter wood highlights to give it depth. Yeah. But as far as like the true highlights to give it that like this is a freaking pirate ship. Right. You yeah. know? Yeah. All the extra details. I mean looking at something like the um, the uh, cart here, all the extra um, sort of fun details we've got around those, the edges of the wood paneling, mm -hmm. um, that's the sort of thing that if, you're, if they aren't molded onto the model, right. these ones are molded on so it's nice and easy to be able to sort of get in there and paint those, but if they're not molded onto the model, how do you go through and, and paint those on? Because right. they would have been hand painted in the, in the past. Right. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that'd be cool to sort of look at that and talk about that and See the different things we can do, and uh, Firelock makes some really good models. Yeah, yeah those yeah. ships are so good. Nice and really nice and detailed. They um, they do great great work for sure. 
And I love, uh, if you guys aren't familiar with Firelock games, check them out. They've got some really cool um, like battle reports that they put out that people have submitted showing off their terrain and the games that they're playing. And it's like, what? Yeah. Some of these terrains <laughs> I see, it's like, that looks like freaking Tortuga from, right. from uh, Game, or not Game of Thrones, freaking... Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, Caribbean or from freaking uh, Black Sails. Black Sails. Yeah. yeah. It's like, what? Yep. The sum of the train that these individuals can put together is just ridiculous. Yeah. Yep. I've actually been watching a lot of terrain videos lately because I want to do some terrain builds. Okay. Yep. So hopefully that can be something we can do as well because even building terrain requires a little paint applications. Yeah. Yep. For sure. What are you? Uh, what sort of uh, terrain are you thinking of? Um, well, I would love to do a, um, you know, like a forest scene. Okay. Type, yep. You know, like a four by four. Cool. Inlay that you could put in and be like, this is my. This is every time we do a campaign. This is my forest scene. Yep. <laughs> you know, I might be able to move a few things around to change sure. it up, but. This is where you're always going to find the campsite. <laughs> right. <laughs> or yeah. the orc uh, horde that is just kind of laying in wait or whatever, you know. Yep. Well, that's cool. Something like that. I would love to do a, like a, a seashore type thing. Um, and, of course, everybody has the big goals of doing the... Um, you ever seen the one where the guy literally has his, this, this one room that's bigger than our studio here, and it's... This huge oh, table, yeah. and it's like from the mountains to the forest to a dungeon to a lake to a, this huge yep. castle. Yeah, that would be the end goal eventually. <laughs> right. Yep. You know, <laughs> that's spectacular. Yeah, that that piece is uh, is awesome. That's got yeah. a lot of uh, a lot of buildings on it from a company called uh, Tabletop World. Okay. Uh, and they do some of the most detailed resin buildings that are on the market. I, th sure. I want to say that the, the guy lives in Virginia. I think you're right. That has this right. huge display. And it, it's funny is, and I say that because I actually reached out to him. Right, <laughs> like, right. Hey, I would love so, to ask you some questions about this. We know apparently somewhere in Virginia this it's, guy is hiding. The, he's hiding <laughs> in Virginia somewhere. And uh, I was like, dude, I would love to come and play on this table. Yep. And he's like, I, he goes, I haven't played in so long. Because his life, he's just busy. Yep. He just he just loves the modeling. When he has the time, he does he does something new or gets All something right. new for his di this huge diorama. He says he may get to play on it once a year or something. Yeah, like that. that's tragic. Yeah. yeah. I guess as long as he's enjoying the uh, the building and the creating. Yeah. That's cool. But uh, yeah. Well, hey, you Rick. Yes. I'm going to put the link for that uh, table of the top display that you're talking about in the chat room so people can check it out. Okay. All fantastic. Yep. So that is amazing. Yeah. I, and I've always wanted to do like a big like dungeon crawl build. Yep. Um, so I, I have, you know Hearst? Yep. I have some of their molds. Okay. Um, yep. we, we picked a bunch of them up at Gen Con this year. Right, okay. Because we were, that's one of the things I want to do is I want to show off like the molding process that sure. you're going to do this stuff and then build this huge dungeon that is like, if, let's say we took like a, a table like this yeah, and then multiply it by 20 <laughs> and it just kind of wraps and walks like an S or whatever right. and each of, the entirety of it is a this big dungeon yeah. that leads to an end goal, right? Yep. And it's just like the gauntlet. Right. You know, every player starts at one end. <laughs> every table has a DM. Yep. So that you can continually just go. Once you got to this part, the next DM run is running the next part of the dungeon to the next. Right. So it goes, so that you can have a constant run of players. Right. Going through this thing, trying to get to the end. Nice. And as they die, they might backtrack to try to hook up with the team that's behind them now. Right. You know, as, as people are dying <laughs> off in their squad. You know, I, th I think that'd be a lot of fun. Something for like Origins, you know? Yep. A big D and D like gauntlet dungeon crawl. For a second there, I <laughs> sorry, sorry about this, but it, I just had a, sort of a, a thought of it sounds a little bit like a golf course. 
you set off your you first people, they sort of tee off, yeah. they start moving through, they move on to the next thing. And if, if they get in trouble, if they get stuck against something and the other other team moves through faster, through it's like, well, yeah, sure, play through. Yeah, play through. Play <laughs> like, through. Kill, kill the rest of the monsters for us. We'll yeah, and we'll journey behind <laughs> you. I mean, that would be a great strategy. <laughs> you know, if you yep. could have them, you know, the first team starts off uh, and you give them, uh, I, I'd almost want to say this would be like one of those like iron crawls. Where, right. Because if, if there's... 18, yep. let's give it 18 holes. 18 okay. tables. Yep. So you have 18 DMs. Nice. Right? Yep. Per, one per table. Yep. You have a new team is starting every 30 minutes. Yep. And they're going through. And it's just yep. boom until they get, you know. And, but you'd have to limit it because. It'd be wild. You know, I think that would be insane. It would be. A bunch That's of players awesome. just screaming, four! Yeah. Right? <laughs> Play through. Come on. Or, All of a sudden, you get hit in the back of the head with an arrow. Ah! It's like, what's going on? <laughs> or as you're fighting like a, a drow, a bunch of people in a drow uh, in, in one room up here on table yeah. four. Table three has now three groups on it because they finally get there. <laughs> and they roll in and they're like, drow! Ah! <laughs> Excellent. So, and each table, like everything yep. on table one is a CR1. Everything okay. on table is CR2. And it just gets <laughs> gradually worse. <laughs> So what? What are dragons? What, what level would they be? What's that? What? Uh, what CR what, would a what dragon CR be? Would, yeah. I mean, that's it could be between CR fifteen and up. There you go. Yeah. I mean, it could be crazy. You lost three tables. Mm -hmm. All dragons. Yeah, all, all dragons. dragons all the time. <laughs> it would be just insane. I think yep. that would be a, a crazy. I mean, it would be fun. I think yeah. it'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. People would want to come and play it, but I. When it comes to like playing with miniatures and D and D and all this stuff, like these miniatures are obviously straight out of the dungeon. Yep. Uh, one of the things I've always wanted to do is like if we played a game here, yeah, uh, and I introduced or whoever the GM in introduced like a new a new magic item, yeah, that it could be a downloadable like certificate that okay. other players could get, yeah, to incorporate into their own campaigns. Oh, neat! You know, kind of like did you ever play Here RPGA stuff back in the eighties and nineties? PGA? Yeah, the Role Playing Gamers Association. No. It was all uh, tournament D and D play. Oh, hang on. You literally go and play a four hour slot, and it would be a, a one shot module. Yep, and I, at, I at have the end, done you'd that. get like a D and D chit of any treasure that you may have personally been able to take out of the dungeon or right. the scenario. No, I, I, mm -hmm. I have played in a in the tournament mm -hmm. sort of thing, but I don't think it was associated with that. So okay. we didn't, there wasn't any prize beyond a certificate kind of right. thing. Right. Okay. Um, I won best dwarf. It's like, yeah. I mean, it kind of fits. Yep. You know? Ugh. And I look like Azog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> best dwarf and best ogre. I think yes. it's best ogre. Yeah. I could absolutely run as best ogre. Yep. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I, I did, that, did that once. When was that? It's like 85 or 86. Good Lord. Yeah, I know. Those were the days. Long time ago. Those were the days. Mm. <laughs> oh, let me tell you, Sonny. Right. Back when I played D&D. &D. <laughs> <laughs> Back when there were only like four classes. <laughs> I had to go uphill both ways in the winter just to get to my my friend's house to play D&D &D for the weekend. Yep. Oh, jeez. Mind your Australian winters aren't that severe. So Are they not? It's okay, no. Well, you have to dodge all the poisonous animals. Yeah. You guys literally have everything that grows or lives there is deadly. That's why you should never go outside. Right. Thank you, Roll20. <laughs> <laughs> so. so if you guys are wondering, and I'm sure you are, uh, the shirt I'm wearing is from armorclass10.com. And if you can't read it, it says... I didn't want to mention the shirt because I've talked about my shirt so often. Well, they already talked about your shirt in the chat. Too. Oh, okay. Right. Another alien <laughs> shirt. Uh, James said that his car is named Ripley. Excellent. So it's it, there's a lot of alien love going on. <clears throat> um, this shirt, like I said, is from armorclass10.com. It says RPGs promoting literacy and abstinence since 1974. Yep. So good stuff there. Oh, 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 <laughs> that was awkward. <laughs> Definitely. So yep. they have a lot of stuff, so check them out. They got a lot of cool uh, gamer themed shirts. Yep. And they're out of DC. Indeed. This backpack's going to kill me. <laughs> Chris Marshall says Dave is the best dwarf. Yeah. 
Thanks, da Chris. David Pauls. Mm -hmm. Yep. Says, uh, ask Dave if he owns any non-alien themed T-shirts. Dave P wants to know. Yeah. <laughs> I I do actually. You've worn non-alien shirts on the show once, already once. once. Yeah, once <laughs> last week, right? It was last, totally week. last week. Yeah. That was laundry day. <laughs> there you go. That was. <laughs> I had to get, get all the laundry done before uh, Thanksgiving weekend. Yep. That's literally what I'm doing this evening when I get home, is laundry. Laundry. Because you're in uh, Tennessee, yeah? Yeah, I went to Tennessee for Thanksgiving. Did you get to check out some of the stores down there? Um, I did I not. Oh. I did not get to check out any of the stores. Here's what I did. I ended up going on Black Friday and looking at a couple comic book collections. Oh, right, uh, okay. So I did. I reached out to some people that had some stuff posted up on like Facebook Marketplace, and there's a couple like there's a, there's a flea market, an indoor like flea mall. Oh, right. yeah. Uh, in uh, Johnson City, right. that I always go to and check and see if they got some comics there as well. So I did. I picked up about eight comics from there. Right. All silver and gold. Age oh, stuff, well. you know, um, yep. 50s and 60s comics. And then uh, I looked at another two collections. One of them I was just, uh, uh, was, it just wasn't a good collection. Okay. Um, but that's okay. They they exist. They kind of will be great. Yeah. Because it, it makes you feel a lot better when you find something that's like, yes. <laughs> uh, and the other one was like mid, but uh, just asking too much for it. But that, again, that's okay. He'll, yeah. Someone will eventually buy it, or he'll bring the price down, or whatever. Yeah. But uh, I did end up going to the Johnson City Mall yeah, because I got a phone call, and someone said, hey, you need to come check out this store. And I was like, what is this store? And it's called Box Lunch. Have you heard of this? Box Lunch. No, I haven't. Box heard. Lunch. This Imagine place is awesome. They have one down in Columbia Mall. Yes. yes. It is. Okay. It's basically Hot Topic. Okay. But not intimidating, because okay. you know how a lot of people are like, oh my god, it's like that's where all the goth kids are, got you know the dark Wiccans. Not that those are bad people; no. they're just different. And sometimes people see that and are a little put off. I'm sure I've seen those people right. at times. Right? Yeah, like. I've role played those people. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, it is just pop culture, all okay. sorts of pop culture stuff, and they have it zoned out like each little spot is dedicated to whatever uh, show or con cartoon or sci-fi thing you might right. be into. Okay. And for every $10 you spend there, yeah. a portion of that goes to feed someone in the United States. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. Yeah, so it's all about... That's where the box giving, comes in. Yeah, giving back to the community through meals to people that need them. Excellent. And I was just like, this is such a great concept. Yeah. And uh, so, and the store was like I said, it was just, it was inviting, not just you know the people. The people were very friendly and inviting, but the look of the store absolutely grabbed you. Which isn't to say that a hot topic isn't that. It just isn't that for a lot of people. Sure. Um, but this absolutely gives you that uh, that feel like you're welcome, and the fact that they do something so good for the community. Uh, I was just like, you guys are awesome. So I wanted to. Kind of give a shout out to them today for yeah, excellent for being so cool. And the one in Johnson City literally opened up the day before Thanksgiving. Okay, so great. So I guess that'd be like boxlunch.com. Yeah, I think so. I haven't I haven't looked up their website, but I'm I'm guessing so. Or if you just looked up uh, box lunch uh, retail or store, right. uh, you can yeah, find Dave, out. Yeah, Dave, it is boxlunch.com. Okay. So. But it is so. I was a little good. Bit, I, as soon as I said it, I was a little bit worried that I might be sending somebody to like a really dodgy site. But <laughs> I'm glad it's a real, a real live site. <laughs> dodgy site. Dodgy site. Yes. But, uh, yeah. Yep. Oh, cool. No, that sounds great. Yeah. Definitely, so if you're uh, out there and you, you said just one in Columbia. Yes, okay. Columbia Mall. All right. Columbia, Maryland. Yeah. yeah. Check it out. If there's one near you, go check it out. Because uh, oh, and by the way, they do carry some Diamond Select toys there. So oh, all right, okay. <laughs> thumbs up to that as well. Awesome. Because we all, you know, we love our friends at Diamond Select toys. Dun -dun -dun Good work. Yeah. The thing I like about that box lunch store, though, 
is that it's a lot of unique items. It's not the typical stuff that you're going to find at like Toys R Us or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Like all these items are like very unique and like have like their own like characteristics and stuff. like it's like a lot of oddities and stuff, but like really cool stuff. Yeah. Excellent. And it all falls under the pop culture arena. So I've, video games, yeah. TV shows, sci-fi, comics, everything. It's nice. Cool. I'm glad you said that, Johnny, because I was immediately thinking like Disney, the <laughs> Disney style store where it's kind of everything's very stock, right? That's cool. Good to know. Great. I didn't sell it good enough. <laughs> <laughs> Well, when you started out, and it was like, so it's a place called Box Lunch. Yeah. And it's like Hot Topic, but for people. And I was like, who like to eat? Who aren't scared. <laughs> who, who, people they who are just sell box lunches there. <laughs> and they, I mean, they have like a lot of recycled. Um, it's, it's just a cool store. Just go check sure. it out. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Definitely cool. And that, that's pretty much the you know the extent of my explorations into uh, stores and stuff out there. In Tennessee? Yeah. Did you get any painting done? No. You wanted to I took, I, I literally took all this stuff, except for what we're painting today, yep. uh, all my paints, all my brushes, up to Tennessee with me. Yeah. Um, but I did not get an opportunity to paint. Um, it's just, ugh. A hassle. <laughs> it, didn't, it, it didn't work out. <laughs> but like I said, I did get to. I, I played a couple games though. Right. I played a game called Unlock. Unlock. Um, Unlock. It's by. Uh, it's like an escape room game. Okay. You use a phone app to help you, and uh, it kind of uh, progresses you through the game as you, as you get clues and stuff. Yeah. Um, and that. So I played that, and then I played uh, Monopoly Gamer, which is. Um, it's Monopoly, but it uses uh, Nintendo characters. Oh, okay. And they have power-ups, and uh, it's, it's almost like playing Mario Kart Mo Monopoly. Right. Because uh, different characters mess with other characters on the board and <laughs> stuff. Um, <laughs> but it's a, it was a lot of fun. That uh, I had played it once before. It was just me and one other player, and it yep. didn't balance well as right. a two-player. Yeah. But we played it with five people, and it was... Just amazingly fun. P perfect for that. Yeah. Cool. That's good. Yeah. One thing I've been uh, wondering about, I know you've, you posted something the other day on uh, Facebook about um, asking people what their favorite RPG systems were. Yeah. Um, one thing I, I wanted to ask is, have you played or looked at um, Tales from the Loop? At all? Tales from the Loop. Yeah. I have not. Okay, that's a shame. But I, I, I mean, tell me more. Well, I, I have, I have, only sort of peripherally looked at it because I haven't done any sort of RPG gaming for a long time. But uh, yeah, it's based on uh, this fantastic sort of dystopian artwork. Okay. Um, the guy called Simon, uh, Sonda Targ or something like that. Okay. Uh, but I think he's. Um, Scandinavian, uh, but yeah, just spectacular sort of near future um, sci-fi dystopia. Okay, where uh, you actually play. At, it, it's got a very, very much a um, Stranger Things, okay. um, Stephen King mashed with sci-fi kind of feel because right. you play as kids, you play as like eleven-year-old, twelve-year-olds, okay, that sort of thing in this when magic world. Still exists. Um, I'm not sure if it's, it's magic. Wait, not, well, sorry, at, at the time. When, as, as life, when you, yeah, when you're 11 and 12, there's yeah. still that mystery and, you know, the, there's the imagination and magic of imagination still kind of yeah. is there. Yeah. Um, I figured I'd be, uh, I wouldn't let you be the only one who poorly described something on this show today. So I'm poorly describing it dang, now, but... <laughs> It's but, my uh, shtick. It's your shtick, dude. <laughs> Stop messing with But it's by shit. some Scandinavians? Um, no, I, I'm, I'm not sure who, who made the game, okay. uh, but it's based on the artwork of this guy. Uh, okay. And I'm sure you'd recognize some of the, the pieces of artwork. But uh, David Simon Stalinhog? 
Yep. Yeah, that's I just looked it up of the uh, Kickstarter. Cool. So he, he's quick. He's quick to jump on, on the, on, on, the uh, on the Googles. Yep. He's a you Googleizer. So, do do you have who who made Tales from the Loop, there, Johnny? The publisher. Uh, Mo Modifius Entertainment. Modifius. Modifius. Okay. okay. Yeah, Modifius are doing. I'm not sure um, if I'm pronouncing that right. You're not. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> M Modifius. Yeah, Modifius are doing the uh, Fallout miniatures game. Oh, okay. But uh, yeah, they do a lot of great. Uh, great stuff, but I think it's it's a game that, like, if anything was going to get me back into role playing, that'd be it. That'd be it. Just that the setting. Okay. Is that? This you know. does look fascinating. Like like you said, like based on the artwork, it looks really good. Yeah, yeah. All right, so if we're gonna plug a cool Kickstarter game, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, oh, <laughs> I want to say there might be just a few hours this left one, on this it. This one's available, but anyway, keep going. <laughs> All right, so this is a this one. There might only be a few hours left, and I'm sure once it's f done and it's already fully funded, but once it's over, uh, it'll obviously be in stores. I'm sure because it it uh, they wanted five thousand dollars. The fund, they got over eighty thousand. Oh, okay, right, nice. And it's called Kids on Bikes. Kids on Bikes, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and it's basically kind of what you're saying. It's yeah. not, a, it, it's not futuristic, or it yep. could be. It depends on how you want to set up your setting, but it is very Stranger Things. Right. Kids on bikes, yep. going out and having adventures. Scooby doing it, yep. and there's one friend that is jointly played by all players, who is your, like powered child right the, your mysterious friend we'll call the individual 13 right. uh, <laughs> and uh, they have powers and as the, the, the they use their powers to become more powerful but the players are the ones that still role play that character as a group right. okay so it's it's yeah. kind of a neat concept that sounds awesome. a lot of a lot of big names uh, worked on putting the modules together as stretch goals okay so yeah that sounds great yeah, yeah. I, I would totally role play me as, as an eleven, a, as a, at age eleven, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get back and do yeah, that. Yeah, the Kickstarter page says it's at uh, ninety three thousand right now. Wow, and Thanks. they have what? Just a few hours left, right? Uh, I'm looking for it. It may have already ended. Hard to tell. I don't. I don't see it on here. It may have because it, it was last night when I was looking at it because I backed it. And it was like at twenty. It had like twenty two hours, so I thought maybe it would still have a few hours left today. Cool. Um, but it's it's very similar. Very, yeah, it's yeah, got that yeah. Scooby Doo feel, where mm -hmm. you're a bunch of kids uh, dealing with the uh, things that you are seeing around your world. Yep. You know, is the haunted house at the end of the street really haunted? Let's uh, let's investigate because we're kids on bikes and it's what we do. We break in, yep. we do breaking <laughs> and entering type things. Yep. As all kids did, or you know, you know, is, is there really a, a wookalar out in the backwoods that eats chil that eats children? You know, right? Yep. Yes, there is. <laughs> oh, yeah. you know. It's already eaten half the potty. <laughs> right. Anybody here familiar with the Wookalar? No. No? Uh, it, was a, it was a creature that was described in the Don Knotts and um, uh, who's, who's the guy uh, that was always in Don Knotts movies back in the 80s, early 80s? Um, Rickle? Andy Rickle? Oh, Don Rickles? Don Rickles. Yeah. Uh, so you had Don Rickles and uh, Don Knotts doing this show where they're basically um, like private investigators. Okay. But they're fake. They're not real private investigators. Right. <laughs> they're just scam artists. But they come come to find out they're, um, you know, one guy's like, what are you scared of? Well, I ain't scared of anything. Oh, really? Yeah. And he says, and he's like, well, what about the Wookalar? He's like, what, what's the heck a Wookalar? And it's like this pig-headed creature that sucks your brains out through your nose. <laughs> it's, okay. It's like, what? <laughs> that doesn't exist. It's, yeah, it's crazy. Well, oh. we're at our time, ladies and gentlemen. We've been sitting here talking for an hour, no so way. we apologize. Yeah. <laughs> Big apologies. Um, yeah, let's, let's throw some rotations up real quick. Yep. I'm just going to finish painting this wheel. Um... I don't really have anything I want to show off. <laughs> what, did you, what did you finish? Did you finish anything? No. I don't You're finish. terrible. I talk too much. <laughs> but yep. you guys can see inside there the, uh, well, oh. not now because it's oh, shadows. You, you slid them to the back, didn't you? Yeah, well, they kind of slipped to the back because right. as, as they'll do. Tilt, tilt them forward a little bit. Yeah. All right, yeah. here. As it comes out. <laughs> Uh, you can 
see the bottles. There you go. Right there on the for the part of the tavern piece. That looks a lot better. Yep. Just uh, the extra layer of, of dry brushing. Mm -hmm. They look good. So that, that uh, yep, top piece. So we got there that. that. I threw well, a these, yeah, these are ridiculously so good. Off. Most people saw that last week. There you go. We got the treasure chests. Which look amazing. Tom Conway, thank you, uh, Bran. Uh, Private Eyes was the name of the, was the name of the movie. Oh, okay, uh, but yeah, the Wookalar. Now we go to the wagon. The wagon. All Oop. right. I wanna, uh, look at this thing. It's ridiculous. So good. Oh, we can't see all the yellow that That's I painted right. today. There it is. Oh. <laughs> As it comes Pretty around close. right there. Yep. Look at that. That looks great. So yeah, fortunately all of those little uh, filigree pieces mm -hmm. are all sculpted into the model. Okay. So uh, they're really easy to pick out. Chains covering the back, uh, back I like door. It. I'm not sure what to write on that. I, I know, right? I was, I've been thinking because I'm not going to use it as Esmeralda's sure. wagon because this is going to be, when we do play, this is going to be um, a character who is a a snake's a snake, snake horse yep. uh, so he'll be like I don't know if he'll be like keep out or you know <laughs> or something because he don't want you honking going. if you're horny yeah yeah something like that something, yeah something like that okay um, but there you go guys ladies and gentlemen uh, the WizKids uh, miniatures we painted today uh, you can get them at your local retailer go check them out um, it's the, uh, the the Red Dragon Bar Red Dragon Tavern or Red and Dragon the, Tavern uh, and the uh, uh, the campsite yep Adventurer's Campsite the Adventurer's Campsite with uh, the wa with Esmeralda's wagon, but uh, this is not going to be Esmeralda's in the campaign. <laughs> so stay tuned for that. Um, go to your local game store, become part of that community. If you're not already a part of it, uh, go. If you are a highly skilled painter, sh teach your teach your wares. Mm -hmm. Show yep. show your skill sets and get other people in, into it. Go uh, at your local store. Big time uh, component of this industry and this yep. and I, this I think hobby. Everything that we uh, that we need to do needs to be geared towards um, keeping our local gaming stores vibrant and exciting places to go and yeah. learn and have fun and meet people and all that sort of uh, all that sort of stuff. I agree, definitely. That's where you're going to have a lot of fun. So go check it out. Also, yep. join the Facebook page for Painting Happy Little Minis so you can show off all your cool paints and modeling that you're doing because we love to see it. And if you have any questions, that community and that group is amazing to, as, as far as giving good information and helping everybody else out. Uh, basically yep. level up together uh, in our in our skill sets. So check it out. And on that note, I'm Rick. I've been your host here for Painting Happy Little Minis. And I'm Dave. I'm Painting Brown. There you go, guys. We'll see you at the <laughs> local game store. Don't forget to subscribe to Game Trade Media. Leave a like and comment on what videos you'd like to see next.